offered you a two million dollar check to sing the parts in the lion king yep not even do the voice yet just do the singing parts. just sing that's something but my immediately my mom goes wait a minute after the excitement the initial excitement wore off she's like wait a minute way real because a lot of people who are familiar with my musical background have always asked me why I hadn't put out any more music. So it just kind of felt like I wasn't able to express myself fully as an artist. I felt that I was dictated to more than my ideas being heard. Jason Weaver, once hailed as one of Hollywood's most promising actors and singers, effortlessly captivated audiences with his undeniable talent from a young age. His prowess not only brought him in front of massive audiences, but also secured him lucrative deals that hinted at a thriving career. However, as quickly as he rose to prominence, Weaver seemingly vanished from the Hollywood scene, leaving many to wonder, what led to Jason Weaver's mysterious disappearance from the glitzy world of Hollywood? Let's dive into the intriguing tale of a talent that seemingly slipped away from the spotlight. Jason Michael Weaver, a versatile and accomplished American actor and singer, was born on July 18th, 1979, into a musical family. His parents, Marilyn Kitty Haywood and Robert Lincoln Weaver, played pivotal roles in shaping not only his character, but also his early exposure to the world of entertainment. Weaver's mother, Kitty, was a key member of the Chicago-based female vocal group Kitty and the Haywoods, and notably, they had the privilege of backing the legendary Aretha Franklin on the soundtrack album for the 1970s film Sparkle. Weaver's journey into the world of arts and performance began to take shape during his formative years at Thornwood High School. It was here that he started to exhibit his talents, setting the stage for a career that would later span across various genres and mediums. In addition to his artistic pursuits, Jason's family expanded with the birth of his son, Jalen, adding a new dimension to his life. His early acting career saw Weaver making waves on Oprah Winfrey's 1990 television series, Brewster Place. However, it was his portrayal of a young Michael Jackson in the 1992 miniseries The Jacksons, an American dream that catapulted him into the limelight. This role not only showcased his acting prowess, but also hinted at the musical journey that lay ahead. The miniseries, focusing on the legendary Jackson family, provided Weaver with a platform to display his talent and mark the beginning of what would become a remarkable career. Weaver's trajectory in television continued to ascend with prominent roles in sitcoms like Thea from 1993 to 1994 and Smart Guy from 1997 to 1999, where he portrayed the character Marcus Henderson. Smart Guy, in particular, showcased Weaver's comedic timing and acting versatility, making him a household name. The young actor was not confined to television, as evidenced by his vocal contribution to the character of young Simba in Disney's animated masterpiece, The Lion King, released in 1994. His soulful rendition of Simba's character song left an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences globally. Weaver would later come to reveal how his mother protected him from getting used in AB by Hollywood Studios. You see, after his successful portrayal of Simba in Lion King, Jason Weaver was offered a handsome payday of $2 million by Disney. However, after much pondering, Jason's mother asked him to turn down the deal. I mean, you know, that amount of money to average middle class family in Chicago in the early 90s that I mean that's something but my, immediately my mom goes wait a minute okay if they're willing to do that okay that's just a so that's it that's all he'll ever get for like the remainder of his life they were like that's it he takes the money that's it she was like no nah, let's negotiate royalty Jason explained the decision saying, Disney had a reputation for re-releasing stuff, and with each re-release, those with royalties in their contracts would receive a nice, hefty check. They were releasing that stuff from the old catalog when they were releasing new Disney stuff. So she was able to see the playing field and go, wait a minute, this is going to make a lot of money over time, so what happens when my son turns 40? Is he still going to be able to get a check for this when they eventually re-release this? And sure enough, she was absolutely right. Weaver continued, Honestly, that residual income that I generate, man, that ish is so helpful. Like even nowadays, like man, when I get a check for the Lion King, I'm like, yes. When I got my first royalty check, me and my mom thought it was a mistake. The one call away singer's earnings have since exceeded the $2 million he was offered, and his royalties will eventually be passed down to his 18-year-old son, Jalen Zylus, and his heirs. We gonna get some bread, absolutely, Jason exclaimed. 
I make sure that I give my mother her just due props and credit for that because if she hadn't done that, that would have been one of the biggest mistakes of my career, business-wise. Weaver won a Young Artist Award for his duet with Laura Williams as Young Simba, a lion cub whose speaking voice was provided by home improvement teen idol Jonathan Taylor Thomas. In addition to ensuring that he got the best deal, Jason's mother also instilled in him financial knowledge to steward his wealth. From the time that I was a kid, my mother, she instilled in me the importance of understanding that this is a business, Weaver told Afrotech during a sit-down interview. She instilled in me the importance of understanding that this is a business and understanding your work within it. Now, you know, you can have fun reciting lines and playing characters, but when it's all said and done, if you're going to do this, this is how you're going to put food on the table for you and your family. He continued, from the gate, business has always been at the forefront of what my family is about and how we navigate through this, because I also have other family members in the music industry who are hugely successful, so that's always been the foundation of how we move in the industry. The Chicago native has always carried the lessons of his mother and family members, who have helped him navigate the entertainment industry with him since the start. Doing so most likely played a part in the business and financial decisions that he's made, including the one to not touch his first royalty check. When asked how he spent that first check, Weaver revealed, It went into a trust, because I couldn't touch it until I was 18, a large chunk of the money that I made when I was a kid. I just didn't touch it. He also shared details on how he spent it. He added, I think one of my first major purchases when I was able to touch it was like a Honda Passport or something like that, as like one of my first cars. I'm not one of those people that need a lot of frills. I'm very low maintenance and I don't like to attract a lot of attention. Even though Weaver did admit to splurging on a few chains to ice his neck with some of the money he's earned over the years, he quickly added that it wasn't long before he sold the pieces of jewelry because it attracted unwanted attention. Anyway, after his role in Lion King helped him transition seamlessly between television and film, Weaver continued to showcase his versatility with roles in Drumline, which aired in 2002 alongside Nick Cannon and The Lady K in 2004. The latter half of 2004 also saw Weaver stepping into the music scene in a significant way. He was featured in the song One Call Away, a collaboration with hip-hop rapper Chingy, which peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. The accompanying music video, which also starred Keisha Knight Pulliam and and one baller Philip Hot Sauce champion, further solidified Weaver's presence in the music industry. In 2006, Jason Weaver played a supporting role in the hit movie ATL, sharing screen space with renowned rappers T.I. and Big Boy from OutKast. The film's success underscored Weaver's ability to hold his own alongside industry heavyweights. Notably, he made cameo appearances in music videos such as Rock Yo Hips by Crime Mob featuring Lil Scrappy and Makeup Bag by The Dream featuring T.I., adding another dimension to his artistic repertoire. The year 2011 marked another milestone in Weaver's acting career, as he took on a starring role in the film He's Mine Not Yours, working alongside a talented ensemble cast that included Karen Ward, Wendy Raquel Robinson, Carl Anthony Payne II, and Clifton Powell. His ability to seamlessly transition between genres and roles showcased the depth of his acting skills. Beyond the glitz and glamour of the entertainment industry, Weaver found himself drawn to television once again. He became a familiar face on the hit TV show The Chai, further cementing his status as a sought-after actor. While Jason Weaver's acting career continued to soar, his musical journey was equally compelling. Even though people first got to know Jason as an actor, his main artistic love was always music. Naturally, because it runs in the family, his mother and aunts recorded jingles and also worked with major recording stars such as Aretha Franklin and Curtis Mayfield. His songwriting and producing cousins Tricky Stewart and Coop Carell are two of the most sought after in the industry. Jason scored the role that would really make people sit up and take notice. He played Michael Jackson from ages 9 to 14 in the 1992 miniseries The Jacksons, An American Dream. He was actually handpicked by the king of pop himself. His vocal contributions to The Jacksons, An American Dream and The Lion King highlighted his ability to infuse emotion and soul into his performances. In 1995, he took a significant step into the world of music with the release of his debut album, Love Ambition, under Motown Records. The album, released on June 27, featured the poignant track Stay With Me in two versions, showcasing Weaver's vocal range and emotional depth. 
Following the release of this album, Weaver completely disappeared from the music scene. After years of people wondering why he never produced any more music, Jason finally revealed that it was a classic case of being dictated to by the powers that be and not being able to fully express himself authentically. He's also said that the experience left a bad taste in his mouth, discouraging him from wanting to pursue further opportunities in the music industry. In 2019, Weaver sat down with Comedy Hype to talk about his diminished music career, and Jason attributed it to being stifled by record label executives. I wasn't able to express myself fully as an artist, he said. I felt that I was dictated to more than my ideas being heard. I felt I was moving in a way as an artist that was unauthentic as far as who I was and what I wanted to represent and what my story was. There were a lot of suits and a lot of adults telling me what to do, he added, and ultimately because, and this is my personal opinion, because it wasn't coming from me, because it wasn't coming from my heart and my spirit, it wasn't received as well as it should have been because I think that's what the public may have felt as well. In any case, this is not something uncommon in the music industry. For decades, young artists have been taken advantage of by the industry and even forced to do stuff they don't necessarily want to do. One child artist who experienced this shady side of the music industry was Lil Jerome. In a recent interview on the Quote Goats podcast, former Bad Boy Records artist Mark Curry opened up about the harrowing experiences of some young talents in the music industry, shedding light on Lil Jerome's unfortunate journey. Curry delved into the exploitative practices that drove Lil Jerome, a young artist, to a breaking point. For starters, Curry recounted Lil Jerome's heartbreaking story, revealing that the young artist was manipulated into singing a song about kissing a girl, an experience he was too young to comprehend. He too young to understand what it's like kissing a girl and y'all telling them to say it like this, and they drove that little kid crazy. And that the industry coerced him to express emotions beyond his understanding, ultimately leading him to a breakdown where he ran into the street naked while speaking in strange tongues as if he was possessed. It did the Martin Lawrence took the clothes off and ran out to the street and all of this, which you know they say artists do what? when they go through that one. And yeah, man, that's how artists go crazy. In any case, despite all the setbacks, Jason Weaver continues to navigate the ever-evolving landscape of the entertainment industry. His legacy remains firmly rooted in his ability to seamlessly move between acting and music. His career serves as a testament to his dedication, talent, and resilience. From his early days portraying Michael Jackson to becoming the voice of Simba and beyond, Weaver's contributions have left an enduring impact on the realms of both television and music. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.